Good morning, St. James family and friends. These are our announcements for the upcoming weeks. Join our prayer call, which takes place every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday at 6 o'clock a.m. Central Standard Time, where you can start your day with prayer. Join us every Sunday before the worship service at 9.30 a.m. Central Standard Time for our Adult Sunday School. You can join us through the Zoom link on our website. Youth Sunday School will be taking a summer break and will resume in September. Register with the Youth Ministry on our website to receive information for future summer youth ministry events. We continue our Summer Bible Academy every Wednesday at 6.30 p.m. through August 25th. For the month of August, we are in our second course called Caring for the Soul. You can join us every Wednesday through the Bible Academy link on our website. We are excited to announce that the St. James AME Chicago Food Pantry will be reopening next Wednesday, August 11. The food pantry will be open every Wednesday from 11 a.m. to 1 p.m. and is located at 9255 South Perry Street. Masks will be required for entry. Remember to go to our website at stjamesamechicago.com to sign up for our email list to receive upcoming updates on future ministry events. Subscribe to our social media channels on Instagram, Facebook, and YouTube to stay connected. Now, let us go into worship. Good morning and welcome to St. James. We are so glad that you have chosen to worship with us this morning. Our scripture tells us, make a joyful noise unto the Lord, all the earth, serve the Lord with gladness, come into his presence with singing. Remember, as you worship with us today, to share and like today's service and give someone a call and let them know that you are joining in with St. James. Let us now join together with the voices of Levi for praise and worship.
It's prayer time in this virtual space. We are reminded that we should always pray and never faint. So at this time, let us take a moment to center ourselves, ground ourselves, and go before the throne of grace. Let's pray. Good morning, God. We are grateful for another day's awakening. God, you have touched us with your finger of love, and we are glad about it. You opened our eyes and allow us to see another day, a new day's dawning. So God, as we come into this space, we acknowledge that without you, we would be nothing. So God, for being who you are and for waking us up, we thank you. Throughout the week, God, we have been bombarded by news and we have been bombarded by suffering, but yet your grace and your mercy has held us and has seen us through. So now that we come into this virtual space to give you the praise, the glory, and the honor, we confess that sometimes we miss the mark, but we thank you that you look beyond our faults to see our needs. So God, for our country, we, we lift up in this pandemic and we continue to lift up those who are vaccinated. We pray for their health and their continued well-being. God, for those who are not vaccinated, we, we just ask God that you will touch their hearts and open their eyes and that they will take care of themselves and that we can all go back to normal. God, in the midst of our political seasons, we pray that your wisdom will, will prevail and will allow uh, folks to, to do the right thing when it comes to, to voting and taking care of the least, the last, and the left out. God, in our virtual spaces throughout, scattered throughout, we just ask that you, your presence will come alive in us and through us. God, now as you move through the airwaves and from heart to heart and from breast to breast, we pray that as the word goes forth with power and with might, that it will be the seed that will cause change and transformation to happen for your glory. So God, we thank you for all that you have done in our individual and collective past, making a way out of no way. God, we praise you right now for what you are doing as you woke us up early this morning and started us on our way and gave us a reasonable portion of health and strength. And God, we give you the praise, glory, and honor for what you will do because you promised never to leave us nor forsake us. For all these things, God, we lift up in the matchless name of Jesus, in whom we live, move, and have our being. Amen and amen.
my name is Victory. He said that I've overcome. I know I've already won. He wrote in my destiny that my name is Victory. I know who I am. God wrote it. God wrote it. It is Take a few more seconds and just lift up the name of Jesus from the rising of the sun to the going down of the same. God is worthy. Come on, somebody type worthy in the chat. Come on, he is worthy to be praised. Won't you pray with me? God, in the name of Jesus, we're so grateful. We're so grateful for another day that you've allowed us to see. We are so grateful for another opportunity to worship you, to be in your presence, to, to feel your embrace. God, we thank you for this Sunday morning, a day like none other, in which we are able to bask in the goodness of your grace and your mercy. And God, in this moment of preaching, we give you thanks for 
this opportunity to hear another word, to hear you speak to our hearts one more time. God, we've gone through this week. We've had our challenges. We've had our ups and downs. We've, we've seen uh, all manner of craziness in this world in which we live. And so we have come at this moment because we need a word. We, we need to hear some good news in the midst of all the bad news that has been circulating this week. God, we need to hear from Jesus. We, we need to hear him let us know that, that, that if we believe in him and if we trust him, everything is going to be all right. And so God, as we come to the word, as we approach your throne of grace with and, and prepare our hearts to hear the word, won't you tailor make this word just for our situation? God, we are not worthy that you should come under this roof. But you say in your word, if you speak the word, our servants will be healed. God, when you speak, people get healed. When you speak, things change. When you speak, things are created. And so God, in this creative moment, in this moment of speaking, won't you create in us a clean heart? Won't you call us to a new reality? Won't you usher us into the joy of your salvation? If someone needs to be saved today, won't you touch their heart so that they might come asking, what must I do to be saved and what must I do to be a follower of Jesus? Come, Lord, and your people bless. Give your word success. Spirit of holiness on us to sin. It is in Jesus' name we pray. And the people of God said, Amen. It's all right to say amen again. Come on, put your hands together one more time. Show up, send up some likes, send up some hearts. Make sure you're sharing. Press that share button as we give God praise for another day. This morning, we turn our attention to the Old Testament book of 1 Kings, the 19th chapter, where in our hearing I will read verses 1 through 9. 1 Kings chapter 19, verses 1 through 9. Listen. For the word of the Lord. Now Ahab told Jezebel everything Elijah had done and how he had killed all the prophets with the sword. So Jezebel sent a message to Elijah to say, May the gods deal with me, be it ever so severely, if by this time tomorrow I do not make your life like that of one of them. Elijah was afraid and ran for his life. When he came to Beersheba in Judah, he left his servants there while he himself went a day's journey into the wilderness. He came to a broom brush, sat under it, and prayed that he might die. I have had enough, Lord, he said. Take my life. I am no better than my ancestors. Then he lay down under the brush and fell asleep. All at once, an angel touched him and said, get up and eat. He looked around and there by his head was some bread baked over hot coals and a jar of water. He ate and drank and then lay down again. The angel of the Lord came back a second time and touched him and said, get up and eat. For the journey is too much for you. So he got up and ate and drank, strengthened by that food. He traveled 40 days and 40 nights until he reached Horeb, the mountain of God. There he went into a cave and spent the night. And for our emphasis, our we want to set our sermonic spotlight on verse 
4. While verses 3 and 4, rather. Elijah was afraid and ran for his life. When he came to Beersheba in Judah, he left his servant there while he himself went a day's journey into the wilderness. He came to a broom brush, sat under it and prayed that he might die. I have had enough, Lord, he said. Take my life. I am no better than my ancestors. Then he laid down under the brush and fell asleep. I want to use as a subject this morning from which to preach, running out of gas, running out of gas. Usually the situation goes something like this. Reverend Shakir and I are in the car. I'm usually driving. We're handling our business, running errands, adulting, as they say, doing life. When all of a sudden, the car starts to chime. Is it the check engine light? No. Is someone not wearing their seat belt? No, everyone has on their seatbelt. Is the door not completely closed? No, everything is secure. Is the trunk open? Then I look, or more accurately, Reverend Shakira looks, and we realize that the car is nearly out of gas. We're driving on E. And of course, panic ensues, and I'm reminded to never let the gas go below a quarter of a tank of gas, and we frantically search in our Google Maps for a gas station before it's too late, before the car stops in the middle of the road, before the reserve fuel runs out. It's certainly not fun driving on E. Do I have any witnesses? And yet, so many of us do it, literally, and figuratively, we, we power through life with very little left in the tank. Am I talking to anybody this morning? And, and the question that always creeps into my mind, especially when I'm driving on E, is how, how did I get here in the first place? How am I riding on empty? I, I, just, I thought I just filled the tank the other day. I couldn't have done that much driving. The reality is that we do so much. Life is so busy. Life is packed with activity and schedules are so extensive and the job has me doing this and the kids have me doing that and the church is, has this program, and, and, and if we're not careful, amen, and if we are not paying attention, we will do all of what our schedule demands, and we end up running on E. So this morning, God is calling us to pay attention. Someone write, pay attention in the comments. Pay attention to your body, because you always are feeling tired. Pay attention because your patience seems to be running thin a lot these days. Pay attention because you, you are snapping on folk and they haven't done much of anything to you. Pay attention to how you feel less motivation uh, and certain tasks have become, and, and your enthusiasm has begun to wane, and, and and you're just going through the motions, and it's a chore to even do basic things you need to accomplish. Pay attention, because life is moving and going and running, and we have to be careful not to run out of gas before we are able to get where God is calling us to go. That's, that's where Elijah was in our text for this morning, running for his life and running out of gas. 
Elijah was running from King Ahab and Queen Jezebel, who had threatened to kill him after the stunt he pulled at Mount Carmel. For, for those familiar with the story of Elijah's ministry, you'll recall how Elijah was sent to prophesy against King Ahab. The Bible says in 1 Kings chapter 16 and 30, it says of King Ahab that Ahab did more evil in the eyes of the Lord than anyone else before him. He was a bad king. And, and Ahab's crime, according to 1 Kings, was that he was diverting the kingdom of Israel away from the worship of Yahweh. And Ahab, under the influence of his wife Jezebel, allowed other gods to be worshipped in God's in the kingdom of Israel. He, he built temples to Baal, one of the chief gods of the Canaanites, and monuments to Asherah, which displeased God greatly. And Elijah was sent by the Lord to pronounce judgment on Ahab and Jezebel for leading the nation astray. And, uh, which, uh, and, and turning them to other gods. And, and the result of that judgment, the, the repercussions of that prophecy was a drought in the land. The conflict came to a head at Mount Carmel, where Elijah took on the prophets of Baal, those who Jezebel had brought into Israel to serve in the king's court and to have influence over the king's decisions. And, and, and on Mount Carmel, uh, Elijah called down fire from heaven to burn an offering and to prove once and for all that Yahweh was the true and living God. He, and, and subsequently, because God had proven God's self with the burnt offering, Elisha also had all of the prophets of Baal executed. And, and this stunt, as one might imagine, did not sit well with Jezebel in particular, who promised to exact vengeance on Elijah. And so Elijah had to run for his life. Elijah was on the run, y'all. But at some point, Elijah got tired. He got tired of running. And in the wilderness, as we come to that point in our text, we, in the wilderness, under a broom brush, at, at his wit's end, at his breaking point, gas gauge at empty, Elijah cries to God, I've had enough, Lord. I'm ready to die. I'm tired. Wonder is anybody in a cyber sanctuary tired? Tired of this pandemic and all the anxiety it has caused. Tired. Tired of all of the uncertainty as another variant makes its way through our global community. Tired of having to pivot so much because we, we, we just can't do business as usual yet. Tired of having to wade through people's misinformed opinions on all levels of government and, and leadership. Tired of running on fumes because you're still having to do with your kids, you're still having to make things work and, 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 and everything is thrown off, tired. What, and, and the question this morning, or several questions this morning are, what, what do you do when you've had enough? What, what do you do when you've reached your limit? What do you do when you are at your breaking point, what do you do when you're tired? Well, I'll tell you what to do. When you're tired, you take a nap. Turn off the light, pull up your covers, and go to bed. Type hashtag nap ministry in the comments. I'm in the Bible. Bible says, after complaining to the Lord that he had had enough of running and living and fear and wishing 
he was dead, the Bible says that Elisha crawled under the broom brush and went to sleep. Now, it might seem odd for a man on the run to take a nap in the wilderness while people are chasing him and trying to kill him, but, but I want to suggest that perhaps going to sleep was the best thing Elisha could have done for himself in the midst of this such stressful situation. A good nap might have just saved Elisha's life. Come on, hashtag nap ministry. Understand, beloved, that sleep is necessary for human function. You can ask Reverend Shakir. She's a, she's a medical doctor. Medical professionals will tell you that you need proper sleep in order for your brain to recharge and for your body to reset. And, and not getting proper rest is bad for your health. Seven or eight hours is what your body needs to be able to fully recharge. And, 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 and perhaps that is why God put so much emphasis on rest. Amen. You, you remember in Genesis, God created the world, the sea, the animals, and the plants. And he created you and me in God's own image. And, and the Bible says that when he finished, amen, he didn't go back to his to-do list and, and, re, uh, and, and start adding more to his to-do list. After he had finished, he didn't go on to the next project. Uh, after he was finished, he didn't, he didn't feel this need to keep going. It's the Bible says that after he had finished the work of creation, amen, he didn't keep going, but the Bible says that God rested. Amen. He, he took a siesta. He, he took a nap. Hallelujah. Somebody type rest in the comments. After the exodus even. After God had done the hard work of setting people, the people of Israel free from bondage in Egypt. God gave Moses the law. Some rules to live by. Ten commandments that outline proper behavior and civil society uh, and, and a few laws into the Ten Commandments, God said, remember the Sabbath day and keep it holy. Six days will you labor and do all of your work, but the seventh day is a Sabbath unto the Lord. On it you shall not do any work, not your manservant, not your maidservant, not even the sojourner within your gates. For in six days God created the heavens and the earth and the sea and all that dwell therein. But on the seventh day God rested, and therefore God blessed the Sabbath day, and he hallowed it. And the old school AMEs would respond to hearing in that commandment with Lord have mercy upon us Lord have mercy upon us for neglecting our well-being for the sake of the daily grind of capital Lord have mercy upon us for treating our bodies not as temples of the Holy Spirit but as machines that never grow tired Lord have mercy upon us for not doing what is necessary so that our families can get the best out of us. Lord, have mercy upon us for not having enough faith in God and in other people and in systems that we put in place so that we don't have to, so we can let some things go and not feel like we need to be in control all the time. So many of us want to try to always be in control like we're God. Lord, have mercy upon us for neglecting our relationship with God because we're running and wonder why we are running on it because we haven't stopped long enough for God to refill us and to revive us and to renew us. Lord, have mercy upon us and incline our hearts to keep these laws. Elijah went to sleep. I said he went to sleep. He rested. He unplugged. Amen. Turned off his social media notifications. 
I'm talking to myself right now. I'm, 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 I'm not talking to anybody. I'm just talking about Elijah and myself. He, he, he stopped insta-stalking his friends and getting jealous at their curated lives. He, he went to sleep. He, he, he turned his phone on do not disturb and went to bed. But while he was sleeping, I said, while he was sleeping, the Bible said God's angels were working. And that's the thing I love about God. When I'm sleeping, he's working. Somebody put in the chat, God is working. When I'm at my worst, God is at God's best. When I'm weak, hallelujah, God is strong. When, when you or I are too overwhelmed or too frazzled or too frail or too frustrated or too tired and, and, and we have to go to sleep, God, who neither slumbers nor sleep, is keeping Israel and keeping you and keeping me. While Elijah slept, God's angels were working like, like the old saints used to sing all night and all day. The angels keep watch over me, my Lord. And, and the Bible says the angels touched him and woke him up so that he could eat. The, and, and the Bible says that the angels brought him some room service. His, his, his hotel room was the broom brush and the angels were bringing him room service, bread to eat and water to drink because God a man is a provider. A man. Somebody put, say provider. God is a provider. God is a keeper. Has any kept anybody? God is a sustainer. God, is there anybody in the cyber sanctuary who can thank God for his provision? Yes, God provides. God provides strength. Get this now, Elijah went to sleep. While he was asleep, while he was resting, God was working. And I want to say to somebody that while you're asleep, while you are taking a rest, God is working on your behalf. While, while you're sleeping, God is turning something around. While you're sleeping, God is opening some. While you are sleeping, God was working. His, his angels for Elijah were baking some bread. God's angels were filling his cup with water. And the Bible says that after he took the food, he, he, he took it, went back to sleep, got back up, took some more food, and the Bible says that it strengthened him for the next leg of the journey. Perhaps this morning you are feeling weak. Perhaps you are running on empty. Maybe you are listening this morning and you are at your wit's end. But I'm here to tell you that God provides strength. Somebody say yeah. God provides strength. And, and, but, but one of the greatest challenges we face as humans is the realization that we might not be as strong as we might think. Contrary to popular belief, we are not supermen and superwomen. And I think that's what we are experiencing a lot uh, of these days. We, we are, we are have, trying to push and power our way through life like superhuman people. But we have to realize, and the good news of this of this text and of the gospel is that we don't have to be superman and superwomen. We don't have to carry the burden of our lived experience alone because God gives us strength. And you know, realizing that God provides strength can be a truly liberating experience. Knowing that I'm not by myself. Knowing 
that God is on my side, knowing that God is watching over me and cares for me. It's a weight off my shoulders. Have I got any company in the cyber sanctuary? It, it releases the pressure to always perform, amen. It, it frees us from having to be superhuman. I, I, I feel so much better because at the end of the day, I can put all in God's hands. Songwriter said, whatever the problem, I put it all in his hands. I know that he can solve it. I've put it all in God's hands. This, this and that, I, I've put it all in God's hands. This, this and that, I've put it all in God's hands. And you know what? I'm, I've decided that I'm going to start putting more in God's hands. Is there anybody in the cyber sanctuary that's ready to put some stuff in God's hands. I, I, I've put it all in God's hands. I've, I've put my family in God's hands. I've put my future in God's hands. I've put my marriage in God's hands. I've put my children in God's hands. I've put my health in God's hands. I've put my anxiety in God's hands. I've put my hopes and fears in God's hands. I put it all in God's hands. Somebody put in the chat, put it in his hands. Put it in his hands. Put it all in his hands. We carry so much. We used to talk about Erica Badu and the bag lady. You gonna miss your bus dragging all them bags like that. We need to let go of all of the baggage. We need to put it in God's hands. We're not superhuman. We are just human. We are made out of clay. We are fragile and we are finite. But God has his hands outstretched. And he says, put it all. Put it all in God's hands. I've turned it over to Jesus and I stopped worrying about it. I gave it over to the Lord and he worked it out. God provides. God provides. God provides. God provides rest when we're weary. So go to sleep. Turn to your neighbor if you got one and put it in the chat saying, go to sleep. God provides strength when we are weak because they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They will mount up with wings like eagles. They will run and not grow weary. They will walk and not faint. But finally, as I prepare to close this morning, God, God, God gives us rest. God gives us strength. But God also provides a way forward. The Bible says that the meal that Elisha took revived him. Hallelujah, and gave him a second wind. And Elijah got up from that place where he had been sleeping and made his way to the mountain of God. And there at Mount Horeb, Elijah met God face to face and received instruction for the next phase of his ministry. But he would not have been able to go to that next level if, if when he was on empty, he didn't stop and be refueled. Just like I had to stop at the gas station to fill up my tank because I was on empty. When you're running on E, 
you and I eventually have to stop and be refueled so that you can go to the next level. So this morning, the sermon, when you're running out of gas, the, the message and the admonition is a simple one. Stop. Stop and pray. Stop and read your Bible. Stop and be silent before God. Because when you stop long enough, when you find your, we find our will and desires begin to align with God's will. When we stop long enough and, and are refilled and refueled, God's voice becomes clearer. When we stop long enough to, to get refilled, our purpose makes sense. Is there anybody that's running on E and needs to be refilled? Listen to what Jesus says. I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never go hungry. And whoever believes in me will never be thirsty. The songwriter put it this way, fill my cup, Lord. I lift it up, Lord. Come and quench this thirsty soul of mine. Bread of heaven. Bread of heaven, feed me till I want no more. Fill my cup, fill it up, and make me whole. And the people of God said, Amen. The doors of the church are open. And maybe you have been running on E. You've run out of gas. You have nothing left. So many of us pour so much of ourselves into so many aspects of, of life. But every now and then, you've got to be refilled. Dean Carter at Morehouse used to always tell us chapel assistants, you can't give what you don't have. And if you've given so much of yourself and your spiritual resources, you there's only a matter of time before you can't go anymore. And so this morning, I want to offer you a relationship with Jesus Christ, who himself says that he is the bread of heaven. He he is the living water. And if you take of him, you will be filled. You will never go hungry again. You will never be thirsty again. You will be filled with God's spirit. You will be filled with God's grace. And so this morning, if you're here and you're ready to be filled back up, you, you've been on empty, you've, been, you've run out of spiritual resources and spiritual power, and you want to be filled back up, I want you to quickly go to our website, stjamesamechicago.com. Go to virtual church, to the virtual church page and fill out either that salvation form or that church membership form and make sure you fill that out and send it to us so that we can connect with you. We want to be your filling station. We want to be that place on, uh, on your life's journey, on, on life's highway where you're able to fill back up and to get all of the power that Christ has for you. Please, either put it in the chat, I want to be saved. Put it in the chat, I want to join St. James. Or go to our website, stjamesamechicago.com slash virtual church and fill out that salvation or that church membership form so that we can begin to be filled. Won't you pray with me? God, in Jesus' name, I'm, 
I, I confess that I'm running on empty. I'm, I, I've run out of gas. And I'm, and, and life is becoming more and more challenging because I'm depleted. And so, like an empty pitcher before a full fountain, God, I, I present my heart, my soul, my life before you so that you can fill me back up. Lord, my, I, I, my faith looks to you. I need you in my life. I believe, oh Christ, that you are the Son of God. I believe that God raised you from the dead and I'm open for you to take up residence in my soul so that I can live a better life, so that I can live a spirit-filled life, so that I can live a life of meaning and purpose and that is truly in your will. Lord, have your way. I receive you into my heart. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. If you prayed that prayer, make sure you put in the chat, I, I want to be saved. Put in that chat, I want to join St. James or go to our website, stjamesamechicago.com slash virtual church where you'll find those salvation or membership forms. Fill those out. We look forward to hearing from you. We look forward to connecting with you. We look forward to walking with you as we, as we move forward in Christ and in God's will. May God bless you and may God keep you and may he continue to fill you with his spirit and his goodness. The Bible says, honor the Lord with your possessions and the first fruits of your increase. It's giving time in our virtual sanctuary and we invite you to go to our website at stjamesamychicago.com where you can give through PayPal or through Givelify. Or you can send your tithes through mail to the church at St. James Amy Chicago at 9256 South Lafayette Avenue, Chicago, Illinois, 60620. And now let us pray. God, we thank you for all that you have given us, Lord. We ask that these gifts that we are giving back to you, that you will bless these gifts, that you will anoint these gifts, and that you will multiply these gifts. God, we just thank you for all that you have done already with what you have given us. We thank you for all that you have done in our lives, that you have done for our families and our community. So we ask for your continued blessings as we go forth and that we will be guided by your word and that we will do your will. This we pray in Jesus' name and let us all say amen. To God be the glory for our praise and worship service today. We thank you for worshiping alongside us on this Sunday morning. And if you have heard the word and would like to give your life to Christ or to join us here at St. James, we invite you to go to our website, stjamesamychicago.com, where you can fill out a salvation form or a membership form. And someone from our ministry team will be happy to reach out to you and connect with you to help guide you on your faith journey. And we invite you here every Sunday at 1030 a.m. Central Standard Time where you can join us both on YouTube and also Facebook. And now let us have our benediction. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord's face shine upon you and be gracious to you. And may the Lord's face turns towards you and give you peace. Hence now and forevermore. And let us all say, Amen. Go in peace to love and to serve the Lord.